Are you a veterinarian looking to administer services to pets or animals in the county where you live? Are you looking to create your own business? Will you be administering your services by going to your client's homes or do you have some sort of brick and mortar location? In today's video, I am going to talk to you about how to properly form a veterinarian professional corporation in just five steps. Hi, my name is Andrew. I'm the managing attorney here at Molai Law, where we help entrepreneurs just like you start your businesses without having to deal with the complicated legal forms. Our done for you service is backed by over 2,700 plus five-star Google reviews, and we can help you start your business too. The purpose of these videos are to provide you with as much guidance in the beginning stages of your business. So if you haven't done so already, please make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. Now before I start talking about the five steps to properly forming a veterinarian professional corporation, allow me to provide you with some context. California passed what's called the Moss Cone Knox Act, which requires professionals such as veterinarians to form a professional corporation. In other words, professionals such as veterinarians are not able to form your typical business entity, such as an LLC or a corporation. In this case, there is no exception to the Moss Cone Knox Act, and if you're a veterinarian looking to start your own practice, then you must form what's called a veterinarian professional corporation. One major reason why veterinarians choose to form a professional corporation in the first place is for the personal liability protection aspect that professional veterinarian corporations offer. The second major reason is they're able to create and build their own brand. And then the third and final reason is to create some sort of legacy for them, themselves, family, etc. The first step to properly forming a veterinary corporation is to file articles of incorporation with the Secretary of State. It's important to note that a veterinary corporation requires a specific type of articles of incorporation filing. It's a specific form just for professional corporation registrants. On that form, you'll find questions such as, what do you want your business name to be? What is your business address? What is your registered agent address? How many shares will your corporation have? These are the type of questions that you are going to see on that form. Once you fill out this form, you'll then be able to submit it to the Secretary of State. Once the Secretary of State receives your professional veterinary corporation application, they take approximately four to six weeks to process all your paperwork, your application, and to then send you back your company documents. Once you receive your company documents, you are going to want to keep it in a safe place, maybe some sort of binder. But once you receive your company documents, you are going to go to the second step, which is to apply for an EIN number. An EIN number is also known as a business tax ID number, and you're able to apply for an EIN number from the IRS. Keep in mind that the business tax ID number is required in order to open a business bank account for your veterinary corporation. If you already have an EIN number for your sole proprietorship, you are going to need to get a new one, specifically for your professional veterinary corporation. Applying for the EIN number is instant if you, apply, if you apply for the EIN number online. Once you receive your EIN number, the third step you're going to want to take is you're going to want to draft the bylaws for your veterinary corporation. If you're not familiar with what bylaws are, bylaws are an internal document that displays your ownership in the company as well as your various roles, whether that be president, vice president, treasurer or secretary. Keep in mind that a single individual can fulfill all of these roles. Additionally, the bylaws are going to display what happens in the event you want to close down the business, what happens in the event you want to add a new owner or hire an employee or independent contractor. All of that will be outlined in the veterinarian bylaws document. This brings me to the fourth step. The fourth step is you're going to then want to open a US business bank account for your veterinary corporation. There are different types of bank branches out there that offer business bank account services. Some of the more popular ones are Bank of America, Chase, 
etc. Once you open your business bank account, you are going to want to ask them about potentially opening a credit line so that you can continue to reinvest into your company. And finally, the fifth and final step is you're going to want to apply for what's called the business license in the county where you plan to administer your services. So if you plan to administer your veterinarian services in multiple counties, then you're going to want to reach out to each of those counties to determine what business license is required to stay compliant with California law. Forming a company is a legal matter, so make sure you speak with a professional before doing anything. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. It's time to invest in yourself. It's time to rise. If you would like to continue learning more about LLCs, businesses, online businesses, go ahead and watch one of these videos.